You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what is going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, or daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we are going to be discussing Kentucky basketball recruiting. They are currently taking a look at one of the nation's best high school scorers. Also going to discuss a comment that Shannon Sharp made on Kentucky basketball. He believes that the Wildcats should have won at least three national titles during John Calipari's tenure here with UK. Going to dive into that later on in the show. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. I want to remind everybody out there that we are free and available on all platforms. And if you're watching on YouTube, it would mean a ton to us here if you went ahead and subscribed to the show getting closer to 4,200 subs here. Also, if you're listening on podcasts, please leave a review. And if you have not already done this, which I I haven't asked, so I don't expect you to, but share the podcast with a friend. If you've got a Kentucky fan out there that you know that may be interested in kind of diving into an every single day podcast about the Kentucky Wildcats, share the podcast. It would mean a ton to us here at Locked on Kentucky. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. So Kentucky basketball reportedly interested in one of the nation's best 2024 scores, and that is LeBaron Phylon, or Phylon. I don't know how you pronounce his last name. I'm going to go with Phylon uh, because that's how I've been pronouncing it uh, since my time covering him previously before Kentucky uh, Kentucky found interest in him. I may be completely off on that if you think that I'm wrong uh, you can tell me in the YouTube comments below. So if you don't know about Phylon, he was originally committed to Auburn. He is a four-star point guard out of the 2024 class. Uh, the thing with Phylon here is that he's not just some taller point guard that is just, you know, really, really solid in, in certain areas. This kid is what Kentucky fans, I think, have been asking for for quite some time. It's what I've been discussing about. Uh, what I've been discussing rather here on the show in terms of what they need uh, out of their point guard spot, and that is a bucket getter. They need a scorer, and this kid is a bucket getter. He averaged over 35 points a game, 6.2 rebounds, 3.9 assists, 2.6 steals, and 0.6 blocks per game this past season for Baker High School. At least I believe he plays, yep, he plays for Baker High School down in Mobile. Scored over 1,000 points in his high school career, 1,051. And if I'm not mistaken, this was all through his junior year this season. He was named the Max Preps High School Basketball Player of the Year for the state of Alabama. He was also named the Gatorade Alabama Player of the Year. So this kid has racked up a lot of awards. He's racked up a lot of points. And when you watch this kid play, it's not like Baker High School is in some no-name region of Alabama. It's not like it's some 4A or 3A school. This is a 7A school. It's one of the biggest high schools in the area, in the Mobile area. I used to be down there. I would know. And this kid has been getting buckets on, on buckets on buckets against all sorts of competition. Breaking down his play style, I think it's very simple. He is somebody that loves to attack the basket and utilize that 6 force frame, that length to kind of extend himself and to finish through contact. He's very, very smooth. I think that's something that you would you, you hear me say a lot about some of these high school recruits that Kentucky is, is taking a look at, but it's just really impressive to me to see what are some of these highlights that you see out here uh, of, of LeBaron playing. Some of them are his, high, uh, his sophomore year in high school, and he just looks complete, handling the ball, distributing the basketball. I think he's... He lacks a little energy sometimes when it comes to uh, pacing the floor and looking for his teammates, but when it comes to exploding to the basket, I mean, this kid really does show out. He's not the, again, not overly energetic in terms of his personality and his play style, but he just gets it done. He, he Whenever you watch his highlights, you'll notice he does one of two things. Whenever he's trying to attack the rim, he will back a defender down into the paint, kind of square him up facing him, and then he will shield him off on one side of his body 
and then he will go and attack with the opposite side. And he will finish with a floater. He'll get to the rim and finish with a layup. He's certainly more comfortable finishing with his right hand than his left, as to be expected out of a high school sophomore. We'll see him develop that a little bit more. But it's not necessarily the three-point shooting, which we'll get to in a second. It's the ways in which he attacks the rim. He backs his defender down, uses all these different behind-the-back moves to kind of get his defender out of position to get him closer and closer and closer to the rim. And it's not like this happens over several seconds. This is just a very smooth back down and get to the rim. It's almost sometimes all one move where he'll make his little behind-the-back move and he's at the top of the paint, two steps layup, he's there. Very, very, very impressed with some of his different skills that he has displayed in his highlight reels of just different ways that he's able to get to the rim and then finish uh, consistently and then the fact that he's six foot four, 177 pounds, I mean, on top of that, it's just a great frame. Defensively, you don't really see a lot out of this kid outside of his highlights, just absolutely swatting uh, the snot out of some smaller point guards. I don't really take too much out of that. You don't really see anything about him stealing the ball, uh, even though I believe statistically, you know, 2.6 steals is not half bad for anybody. He's a scorer. This is what he's known as. And to be honest with you, even if he's not great on the defensive end, I don't really think it matters because he's got the length and the in the scoring ability to make up for it on the other other side of the court. So shooting wise, I think that you would expect a kid that does not take a ton of threes relative to his ability to score and get to the rim. You would expect him to not be a great three point shooter. I don't know what statistically he shoots, but in terms of his form, in terms of his timing and execution, it is just again just beautiful. It's great. For a kid that's only a four-star, I mean, he's a top 50 player in the country, but uh, I would see almost borderline five-star tendencies out of this kid. I think that he should be a five-star just based on the way that he operates in the mid-range, at the rim, and then shooting from beyond the arc. I've not seen a ton on his film when it comes to iso ball and just pulling up in somebody's face and hitting a three. Whenever you see him take these three-point shots, it's typically off of an assist or off ball. He's not dribbling into a shot. Uh, he's getting past the ball into a shot, uh, typically, at, at least when it's outside the arc. So we'll be curious to see how he develops that in his senior year. This is somebody I think that we'll be talking about for a while. I don't necessarily know if Kentucky's in some sort of lead uh, for this kid, but I do know that he is receiving interest per multiple reports. I believe Travis Branham of 24-7 Sports was the first to report this after D committing from Auburn. Uh, Phil, uh, Phylon said that he was hearing from Kentucky, including Kansas, Yukon, Houston, Arizona. I mean, just a lot of really, really solid blue blood schools that are looking at him right now. LSU, uh, Cal is another team that's looking at him. Uh, so this kid from Alabama, this kid from Mobile uh, is probably going to make his way uh, around the uh, around the country here, just taking a look at some of these other schools. But I think that he would make a good fit in the Calipari system, Calipari system for a, a couple of reasons. First of all, it's his play style, scoring the basketball. I mean, as much as we may complain about Kentucky's offense not taking a ton of threes, I mean, this kid would fit right in. I mean, he's an excellent, excellent scorer at the rim, and I think that he, along with his solid three-point shooting whenever he would take them, I mean, he would just be the perfect Calipari point guard on top of his frame uh, the complete opposite of what we've seen recently. By the way, I don't know if you saw it. We may discuss this tomorrow. Maybe not. Severe Wheeler committed to Washington. He will join Keon Brooks. Random side note here. Uh, just talking about height with UK point guards. But it's the height. It's the way I think he would fit in. And whenever he was asked about what he's looking for as he restarts his recruiting process, so to speak, he said, I just want to find a coach that wants to take me in, wants me to be a leader and true point guard to their team and community, Love around the fan base, walking around the campus, and visits a great thing is a great thing. Uh, so I'm really intrigued to see how Kentucky moves forward with this guy because looking at next year, Rob Dillingham's probably going to be a one and done, as is DJ Wagner. You're looking at bringing in somebody like Phylon to be your score, to be your dude, and I think that he would be perfect. I think that he would be perfect. With another year to kind of develop these, these kind of get out of some of these tendencies, and maybe develop some new ones. I think in his offensive game, he can become a very, very well-rounded kid uh, heading into uh, heading into his uh, his freshman year in college. So we will watch his high school career with great interest. Uh, to quote that that um, that meme there. So 
If you've got any thoughts on LeBaron, if you've got any thoughts on what Kentucky needs out of their point guard spot in the 2024 class, you can leave that in the YouTube comments below. I want to take a dive into what Shannon Sharp had to say about Kentucky basketball and what they have been doing since the beginning of the John Calipari era. And he has a number of championships that he believes they should at least have. Before we get to that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious snack, but you don't want all the sugar and calories, then you need the best tasting protein bar out there in Built. You've really got to try these things. They're healthy and taste amazing. They're covered in 100% real dark chocolate. Phenomenal. And the flavors that they have, absolutely phenomenal. Churro, peanut butter brownie, salted caramel, cookies and cream. Really, really good macros on top of these as well. 130 calories, 17 grams of protein. You can swap out your candy bars with these. I mean, they, they taste that good. And again, they're really, really good for you. You can get your order over at Built.com. All, all kinds of flavors, uh, specialty flavors over at Built.com. Or if you want to go to Walmart or Sam's Club, you can get a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puff. Or if you're at Sam's, you can get brownie batter puff and churro puff. All really, really good flavors. Incredible for you. You've got to try these. And when you do, you can thank me later. All right, continuing continuing along here on the Thursday edition of Locked on Kentucky. Lance Stahl hanging out here with you. In NFL Draft is tonight. And if you have not checked out the Locked on NFL Draft big board, you need to go ahead and do that. It's wherever you get your podcast. Just search up Locked on NFL Draft on YouTube or, again, wherever you get your pods. Also, if you have not checked out the Locked On College Basketball podcast, you need to do it. There's no reason why you shouldn't have at this point. Isaac Shade, Andy Patton do such a good job with that show. Uh, You need to go check them out instantly to kind of get your scoop on what's going on around the world of college basketball now that the season is over. I think it's going to be the final time I ask you on today's show. I'm going to continue to do it. I have no shame. Subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the show. You're going to want to stick around. It's going to be a great off season. Going to have a lot to talk about. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you're listening on podcast, follow and download the episodes. You need to be keeping up to date with what's going on every single day. And this is the best place to do it. So really appreciate everybody that has joined the bandwagon. Really appreciate all the positive comments on YouTube. It's be, it's ridiculous how awesome you guys are and how kind you guys, guys are about the show. So, And if you've got any questions, leave them in the YouTube comments below as well. Or, again, if you're listening on podcasts, do not feel afraid to reach out to me at LockedOnUK on Twitter or at LanceDaw underscore on Twitter as well. Ask me any question to do with Kentucky Athletics, and I'll take a look at it and see if I can answer it. So Shannon Sharp the other day on ESPN with Skip Bayless, I don't know what they were talking about. This was a soundbite that was taken out of context, that was played uh, on ESPN. Several reporters for UK filmed it, put it on Twitter, and Sharp just kind of sounded off on how he feels about Kentucky basketball having not won all but one title uh, since John Calipari has gotten there. I'm just going to play the soundbite for you guys. So this is what Shannon Sharp said uh, about Kentucky basketball and how disappointed he is in them. We're about to get too far off the topic, Skip. Kentucky ought to be ashamed of himself. All them players that they can't have come out, Carl Anthony oh, Towns and Lord. Jamal Murray and Booker and Van Dorn. Everywhere, Dorn. everywhere you Shea go. Gilger. And y'all ain't got but one title? Really, Skip? I love John. With Boogie, with Boogie Cubs and hey. John Wall. Hey. And you got what, Skip? Over, number one overall draft pick, AD, number one overall. Uh, uh, Carl Anthony Towns, number one overall. John Wall, number one overall. I don't disagree. You, you got to do better. Hey, yeah. AD got you one. AD got you one. But Skip, come on, man. Y'all got to do better. Y'all should have done better than this. Ain't no way. They should have had at least three. Man, I, I can't argue because it's it's the biggest pipeline in college what? basketball. There you go. Shannon Sharp believes that Kentucky basketball should have won at least three national titles with all of their draft picks that they've had. And if you don't have the number off the top of your head, I'll go ahead and help you out with that. Since 2010, these are the players that Kentucky basketball has had drafted into the NBA. Daniel Orton, Eric Bledsoe, Patrick Patterson, DeMarcus Cousins, John Wall, DeAndre Liggins, Josh Harrelson, Brandon Knight, Ennis Freedom, Darius Miller, Daron Lamb, Marcus Teague, Terrence Jones, Michael kidd Gilchrist, Anthony Davis, Archie Goodwin, Merlin's Noel, James Young, Julius Randle, Dakari Johnson, Andrew Harrison, Devin Booker, Trey Lyles, Willie Cauley-Stein, Carl Anthony Towns, Tyler Ewis, Eulis, Scal Labissiere, Jamal Murray, Bam Adebayo, Malik Monk, De'Aaron Fox, Hamadou Diallo, Jared Vanderbilt, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, K. 
Kevin Knox, Keldon Johnson, Tyler Hero, P.J. Washington, Nick Richards, Emmanuel Quickly, Tyrese Maxey, B.J. Boston, Isaiah Jackson, Ty Ty Washington, and Shannon Sharp. I don't necessarily know if B.J. Boston. Well, no, never mind. I'm thinking of somebody else. So there you have it. If you did not have time to count that, I do believe that is 38 players, 38 that John Calipari has gotten to the NBA since he arrived at Kentucky in the 2010 season. And since 2010, there has been one title to show for it. They lost to West Virginia in their first year, and the second year they lost to UConn. Third year, they went all the way and beat Kansas in the national title. Fourth year, they lost Robert Morris in the NIT. Obviously, as we know, that was the purge, essentially, after all those players had come in and gone. In the uh, in 2014, you lost to UConn again. In 2015, you lost to Wisconsin in, uh, in the Final Four. In 2016, you lost to Indiana in the second round. 2017, lost to North Carolina in a very, very tough game uh, in 2017. That team was destined to do some really, really good things. Unfortunately, things just kind of ended up falling short off that buzzer beater. 2018, you lose to Kansas State in an, in an annoying game. 2019, you lose to Auburn in another very annoying game. 2020, uh, the team was solid. I don't think they would have been able to make a, a national title run. I think they would have been elite eight at, at best, but that's just my opinion. 2021, don't want to talk about it. 2022, also don't want to talk about it. And then 2023, uh, that this past year's team was just not that great. Um, just, just not that great. So, that's the situation. You get your one national title, and you've had moments early on in the John Calipari tenure where you've gotten close, you've gotten close, you've gotten close. And even in 2000, I think 2017 was probably the last time I felt really, really good about Kentucky potentially making a run and winning the national title. I know in 2019, that team was was also really, really good. Uh, I'm not quite sure how they would have held up against a team like Virginia or a team like, I don't know, Texas Tech. Uh, I think that the Michigan a Michigan State Kentucky national title game would have been really fun. Uh, it's a shame that that uh, that the Spartans didn't win that with Cassius Winston. Um, but yeah, Kentucky has had their moments where they've gotten close, so to speak. They've had a really good regular season or an eh regular season, and they've still found a way to get really really close. And it's I think it's attributed to the fact that Cal has gotten all of this talent. But at the end of the day, I think it, it has to be brought into question, you know, looking at the overall picture. Because we've talked about this at length uh, with Cal for two years now, two seasons now. Is he the coach that Kentucky needs to take them to another national title, or do they need a refresher? Do they need to hit the reset button? And I have continued to hold the line where I have been critical of Cal whenever I feel like I need to be critical of him on the show in terms of his coaching ability and his his inability, I think, to make adjustments that feel like they need to be made. And that's not coming from a fan's perspective. It's coming from a, a basketball perspective. I've never coached, so I can't I can't sit here and speak fluently on it. I just know that I think if the world is sitting here telling you one thing and you're doing another and it's failing – You probably need to try something else. And this past year, after Kentucky hit their early season slump, I mean, they turned it around, and the majority of it had to do with coaching. The majority of it had to do with changing rotations, changing lineups, making better decisions, and just kind of playing with what they had. At the end of the day, Kentucky was just playing with what they had. But I was impressed. I was impressed with the fact that Kentucky was able to kind of bring things back, and they were able to do all of these different things, winning close games because of coaching and making his players fight hard, um, which is something I think that's difficult to do at times whenever you have a bunch of freshmen consistently coming in year in in and year out, having all this roster turnover. I think that right now, for me, and this is what I said two years ago, and I'm going to say it again, I said it this past offseason after, uh, at the end of this season, rather, after everything was was over uh, against Kansas State. This is the year where I feel like if Kentucky doesn't make a Final Four run, then I think that a run at the Final Four, like they could lose a close game in the Elite Eight, is what I'm saying. If they don't make a run at the Final Four, Cal's not going to get fired, but there's going to be a majority of this fan base that is not pleased with the run. 
since 2016. Round of 32, Elite Eight, Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four, or excuse me, not Final Four. You didn't make you didn't you finished fourth, I think, in the AP poll. 2021, no NCAA tournament. 2022, round one, round two. I mean, you, you can't sit here and say, oh, a sweet 16 berth with all of this talent is what's going to be acceptable for this fan base this upcoming year. I agree with Shannon Sharp. I think this team should have two national ti- or at least three national titles. I think in 2012, obviously you get your championship there. That's the one. In 2015, you should have been able to pick up one in 2015 with all the talent that that team had. And then in 2017, whenever you lost to uh, North Carolina, I think that that would have been your other year. 2019, you could also make an argument. One of those years, 2019 or 17, Kentucky should have won it all. With all of the talent that they have had, there is no reason why Kentucky shouldn't have at least one more title. You can't have 38 and 1, 30 and 7, 32 and 6 type of years and not make it deeper than the Elite Eight or the Final Four. You have to make at least make the title game. And I understand that I've also said on this show quite a bit as well that Kentucky making a deep run in the NCAA tournament is very difficult, not just for them, but for anybody because of the way that the tournament is set up. At the same time, if you have all this talent, you should have a coach. You should have a coach that is able to direct you and is able to get everything together and make that run. And they've been close, and they've been close, and they've been close. But they've not been back to the national title since, what is it, 2014? And even that year was just a year where you just had a a weird hodgepodge, I think, of of five-star players. Uh, The Harrison Twins, Randall, uh, Willie Cauley-Stein. I mean, you had Dakari Johnson as well uh, in there. I mean, a a team that didn't play well uh, throughout the season. Uh, finishing with with almost ten losses, well, they did finish with ten losses after the uh, the SEC tournament. But it's a situation this season where you have to look at everything and say it changes, right? The fi- final four, elite eight, final four, and it better look good. I think that's what we're looking at. And to be honest with you, I expect that right now with the way that these kids are being hyped up, with the way that this class is being hyped up, the way that this team is being hyped up, you get Hunter Dickinson. And I think the rest of the national media will be on that bus as well. I think that fans will be excited come mid-February about Kentucky's ability to make a run in March next season. I, I, I believe that. But we have to actually make it happen. And I, that's the question is, will Kentucky make it happen? So I agree with Sharp. If you've got any thoughts on what Shannon Sharp had to say about Kentucky basketball needing to win more national titles than they have under John Calipari... You can leave that in the YouTube comments below. And that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. Again, you can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore. And you can follow the show over on Instagram. That is at Kentucky Podcast. One more time, questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments below. Hit me on the socials. I will see you all tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Kentucky. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And God bless. God bless.